Do you remember how we in last episode actually went over budget? Well, let me present to you the fix. We're just going to check this side out here. You see this armor here? Two layers of materials and alloy and more wood. Is this a little bit too thick? Hmm, maybe we're wasting materials having a lot of armor here. Hint, hint. Ta-da! Let me present to you the new armor on the left side that won't be taking any fire if we're lucky. Look at this, I think this looks so cool, I don't know about you, but to get the same feeling as we got with the shields up here, and have you chosen your shields commissioned officer, remembered that you can choose your shield? In any case, um, we can see here that I've used the same colors, kinda-ish, uh, a little bit, the bronze at least, to go through and have a little holy structure to the side here. I think it looks pretty cool, and it actually saves a lot of materials. Now we are 2.158, so we still have some materials to play around with. And this arm is of course very thin, it is uh, literally, uh, look, it's just, it's just tetras, yes, I've become one of the tetra people, that's really bad. We have some of them for connection, otherwise we just have like one layer of alloy. That's the extent of it. We have one layer of alloy as uh, armor here. And on these stripes you can see we don't even have like one layer of alloy. We basically have very thin, almost non-existent armor to decide here. So yeah, it's thin. It's thinner than thin. If an enemy comes... I shouldn't give you ideas, but... <laughs> If a challenger tries to use missiles that will go around and come from the other side, I think we'll be in deep trouble, man. Look at that. Yeah, well, in any case, it's thin armor. It's not very likely anything will shoot us from here, but man, um, we've saved a lot of materials doing this, man. So much materials. So yeah, I thought that was a pretty smart idea. Uh, again, the idea behind the Gimli ship is that we should only use materials where we need to. We should only armor where we have to. And the left side, we don't have to armor that. So of course, this upper layer is super thin too. It's like half a layer of metal, half a layer of wood. And then we have just one layer of, basically one layer of uh, alloy down here. So I think that makes, that makes a lot of sense actually. And even though the thought behind the game is to not armor more than we, ha armor more than we have to, um, I somehow dis decided to spend a huge budget on decorations, so it doesn't make sense, um, really. Uh, I'm a little bit hi hypocritical, I I'm sorry, but you know, you gotta spend on design, you gotta spend on the looks. Otherwise, you know, no one will remember a uh, sad looking battleship that is good. Everyone will remember a good looking battleship that's decent, I think. So I removed some lamb nodes on this side because of course when a shot comes here zoom, we want it to stop shooting at it when it's like out of range. So I think that's pretty nice indeed. I forgot to show these last times but uh, we actually have like access points now. So you can walk in here um, and not here. Now that's only one access point. But anyways we got the, we got the shapes pretty smooth. So that's, that's one thing. Here we have the next iteration of the ship. And you can't see huge differences right now, but we have some small anti-cram missiles or anti-missile missiles going up here. I think that looks pretty nice. Um, and if something appeared before and I just forgot to showcase it, then I'm sorry, but you know, I will think I'll be able to show you everything um, eventually. So in any case, what has been going on here? Well. You can see the teaser. It was a little bit too expensive. 30,000 materials just for a big missile system to tease the enemy. So I exchanged that with the same type of system, uh, but small miss uh, medium missiles. And I think they'll do the same job, basically, because I frankly think that those large missiles wouldn't have gone through the Ragnarok anyways. Like its defenses were pretty strong. 
I also did some small tests and I found out that this big little laser box here, it wasn't really well protected. Uh, this hard shell, heavy armor hard shell thing didn't work. So I put some staggered era here for now and hopefully that will make it not blow up. I added some hard shell on these however, yeah. So we have the beautiful little structure here, we have a lot of empty space and as you know, empty space is the best armor. Void armor is the best armor, because you can't get hurt when your sh enemy shoots at nothing. So um, that's, that's why actually having big empty spaces is pretty useful. However, I would love to have uh, water pumps in here. Man, that would just make me able to like remove two thirds of these engines, to be honest. I don't need all these engines, I need them for floating, so it's really expensive. But if I'd uh, removed a lot of engines and had air pumps instead, we're gonna lag so much that's gonna be unacceptable. Did I show this? This is an extra, I think I did. This is an extra targeter. Yeah, I did that like two videos ago. That's, a that's some time ago. Yeah, so that's basically like that. We have been making the shape of this really beautiful. I think you can see exactly how this uh, shape is going to develop. And we have a lot of testing to do and a lot of things to try out. Um, we're just gonna add some finishing touches and then we can like think a little bit about which turrets and which armor we need to switch out, what defensive systems we should have or not have. In any case, I will give you some rules on how to build a ship if you want to send it into some official battles. Uh, however, I'm gonna do that next video and you don't need to hurry, there is a lot of time. We have a long list of ships that are already existing, like the Turtle Lord, the Ragnarok and like five others that we're gonna do battle video videos with. So we're looking at one to two like extra month of time after this ship is finally done, which is probably a couple of weeks away anyways. So yeah, you don't need to worry, you don't need to hurry. Um, I'm gonna give you a little set of rules to abide by if you wanna send in the ship to battle this. In any case, let's move on to the next iteration. And have you seen all my beautiful golden details and lining here? Isn't this quite beautiful? I think I did a pretty good job. Like this is a small detail, but I just think that, that small detail, that golden trim just adds so much or the golden inlays between the iron and the wood. Maybe it's just me. Let's move on. What happened here? We're now 2 million and 45k. Yeah, we decreased the cost a lot on this. Why did we do that? Well, turns out the pipe organs... Um, I did pitch this a little bit against the Meg, you know, for testing. And... They didn't get through and they shoot every 80 seconds. So I just thought that's a complete waste of material, go away. Because they're, they're not cheap, they're not super cheap. So they went away and now we have a much cheaper ship. We've been doing some cost saving measures because of course I want to be able to upgrade this ship to actually pack a good punch. We don't want to have anything on here that deals useless damage. This means that these crams will probably have to go as well, but they cost so little that we... it's not a high prio. It's not a high priority. Another thing that cost a lot was my darn laser box. And it turns out my laser box did not protect them well enough. Like, they had heavy armor surrounded by them, but it turned out that a shell could get through and detonate stuff here. So it was a little bit like... Yeah. Yeah. When just testing it a little bit briefly, shell penetrated, exploded the laser box. Like one, one really good shot destroyed almost the entire laser system. So I realized that that just has to go. We can't waste heavy armor or something like that. So I'm going to find another way to use this laser system. Maybe put it somewhere else, probably spread it out to make us have some efficient uh, laser protection. We also added some internal armor to protect these beautiful things, our um, 
uh, turbines because they could also get destroyed by a stray frag not very nice at all so that has been fixed and this has made our budget so much cheaper what we also have been adding is adding some cool stuff in the superstructure staircases up here so we can walk with staircases up here so we can where is it climb up here so we can walk into here and look here we have an auxiliary little engine to provide some extra engine power if we have to have to it also provides a heat spot so heat aiming things might aim up here which is um, if they're accurate ain't gonna do as much damage and we have a little tiny electric engine and just some cozy-ish interiors then we can climb up here to this layer where we have nothing useful except some smoke dispensers and a beautiful little room. Like, isn't this so cozy? I think this room is pretty cozy, I don't know why. And then we can climb up to the bridge, of course. Very nice. While we should discuss important matters, we of course need to do more important things, which is more decorations. So we have the name Army of Jimmyism Gimle right here, very beautiful. We have added some cool quotes and stuff. So here we have Army of Jimmyism standing. Here we have, uh, like, why not? Let's just stick some Latin on this thing. Here we have Acta non verba. So um, this is a ship of action, not talking. No negotiations here. And of course, Army of Jimmyism Invictus. Very beautiful, which means undefeatable, which you probably know by now. Our golden logo, very beautiful, again, uh, we have, uh, I came, I saw, I conquered, <laughs> oh god damn it, isn't this ship too much, yeah it is, we have a beautiful decal, we got the uh, black flag mark of the army of Jimmyism right here, super beautiful, um, yeah, and that's like, uh, we have spread out these type of, we have a, we have it on this one too. We have these decorations here and there, and here we have the white mark on the army of Jimmyism. Which is the same, uh, same file that's on my shirt actually, pretty funny. AOG Invictus right here, and here. So you can see, we have been decorating this thing. And here too, isn't that beautiful? When this ship comes, it's like, who's there? And they're like, oh shit. <clears throat> or maybe not. That's the, that depends on how strong the enemy is. We don't know, we'll kind of win. Yeah, but we decorated this, it's really important. And of course, we have the army of Jimmyism flag, which is hopelessly dark all the time. I don't know, like, it's impossible to light it up. It's, it's, it's stupid. I don't know why, from the depth, can you like update this darn texture to not be so dark all the time? It looks like a, like, half rotten, like, potato sack or something. Can we like get proper fabrics, please? Or at least the option for it? Yeah, well, probably not. But there we have it. Beautiful decorations all over the place. And in the meantime, I added my super discount, uh, little turret here. Uh, it's not that cheap, but it's pretty cheap. It's a dual barrel uh, stealth cannon. It's called a stealth dagger. It uses uh, these ones and a not too high of a millimeter, only 1300. Uh, so the detection range for these are only 200 and, uh, 257 meters, which means that only crams should be able to attack it. I think that sieves and uh, anti-missile, anti-cram missiles will not be able to target it, hopefully. But yeah, that's what we've been doing, so let's load in the next iteration. And we have, of course, been working more on the decorations. Oh yes, uh, since this is the Gimle, the Golden Hall, we of course need some decent things in here. So, I started to prepare the feast. Look at this, I made a little dish thing where we can eat a tiny uh, little uh, AI core with a small brain inside, very tasty. So it's some kind of um, sushi for machine people, <laughs> with chopsticks and everything. Uh, we have uh, surge protectors to uh, 
you know, absorb those dangerous electric surges you may got nearby your rambot, and some um, struts if you need some more support in your life. Any case, uh, other than that, I outright stole. He is okay with it, by the way, I asked him. Uh, but I outright stole the beautiful drink that Setup has designed for the uh, absolutely stunning uh, uh, Stritzjagd refit of the Slabman. And if you haven't seen that, you absolutely have to check out the Slabman Challenge uh, playlist. It's so cool. But he basically made this awesome little drink uh, that was onto the ship. As you can see, it's like some kind of gray machine fluid, perfect for rambots. Uh, so I added that all over the place here. We have some extra AI routines and stuff like that. We got some ammo pieces, fuel, you name it. Everyone's taste can be met on this table. Even some spicy chef sharp, sharpenal, not sharpenal, chef thing. I think this is kind of like um, like spun sugar for machines. In any case, uh, this terminal is also a setup's design. I thought it was really neat and really small, so I, I did make a copy of that myself. And he's okay with anyone using it. So, I've uh, taken some of his designs for that, as well as um, he made this beautiful shelf with some drinks and I did take that one too. It's a really beautiful little design. Just, <clears throat> this is like two blocks of wood actually, but a lot of decorations just add so much to this. And a little drawer also by setup from the Stritzjagd. And yeah, so I really like those interior pieces he designed for the Stritzjagd. So again, I saved some of them to use at uh, the Gimle too. Which is pretty nice, I think. Really cool designs there. And here too, I made a little table so we can have a co-pilot thing. Oh, here is the small chandelier, by the way, which of course we need up there, if I forgot to show that before. Inside of here, um, we also took some other designs, This, these again, and um, Setup also made a pool table, so we added a beautiful little pool table. Uh, that he made for, <coughs> for the Stritzjagd and I guess that the, um, the fine ladies and gentlemen dining at the Gimle should be able to go down here and play some pool, don't you think? I think so. Yeah, nice decorations indeed and we still have the cannon scum on there but I made them gold because that fits better. And of course if you want to relax we got setups relaxing uh, areas the, real, the little reclining uh, sun shares with a drink and a parasol, very nice indeed. So yeah, we, we're really making this have a luxury cruise touch to it, because that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? A warship with a lux, luxury ship cruise. That's how bold the uh, Gimli is. I guess we're gonna eat that up pretty much, but <clears throat> that's, that's our... Uh, that's what we're going for. The army of Jimenism is nothing but uh, pretentious and blown out of proportion, so it fits. <laughs> Jimenism, stop giving away your inner strategies. Other than things in the looks department, we have upgraded some interior armor here. We have also been having some places where to have uh, lasers. The laser box was simply too dangerous. I removed all the lasers from here. We can't stack them close to each other anyways. I don't know, maybe we'll have something else in here because now this structure is pretty like, it's pretty connected to the rest of it. We do have some pumps here. I think we have the laser core in here. Um, no, we only have some, we only have some small pumps in here, yeah. Um, and that's, that's, that's the extent of it. Otherwise, it's an empty area. Um, just some extra auxiliary pumps and connection points. That's eight. And instead, I've uh, spawned my beautiful little prefabs of insulated and armored laser pumps like this. Isn't this pretty nice? And we have some cool angles so they'll, they won't get hurt by frags too easily, I hope. 
like this one in the back but more protected. Yeah, so there we have it. We have some of the lasers spread out. Uh, right now the lasers is a little bit uh, less strong than it was before, but that is going to be fixed. We have finally started to make this little walkway. So we have this little basic interior feeling. Um, we added a little laser here. Not very well protected, but we couldn't fit it. We added some lasers on the side vertically here. Not EMP protected at all, but they are just behind the turret. So they will not be getting too easily damaged because this turret is of course pretty well protected with heavy armor and angles. We even stuck a little area in here, so yeah, we have been working on making this laser uh, a lot stronger. And since I realized the wiseness of protecting things behind the turret wells, which are really well armored anyways, since the right side is going to face the enemy, I put my laser core in here. This is my new laser core prefab, all the commissioned officers can access them. And before I forget it, I will just give out a huge thanks to Admiral Super Dave, Captain Y, Stellar Lieutenant C2, Venerated Lieutenant Powered by Greed, Lieutenant Asteria, Tyler Russ and Vincent Veritas. Thanks a lot for being a higher member in the army of Jimidism. So, in any case, let's move on here. We got some basic splitter protection and stuff like that going on there. Uh, I removed some of the battery because it was just a little too much. Because if you didn't, if you haven't noticed that, batteries are really expensive, man. And again, we're working on the uh, interior looks. We got some golden stuff going on there, diff guns, and if we go in here. Now this is going a little bit too low, so I'll have to fix that later. But now we can go down here, go into there, and we just have a ladder down here, I don't know. We'll see how we connect that up later on. It's gonna be better when we're actually going forwards as well, by the way. And if we remove the GPU ocean, I think the problem goes away too. In any case, um, oh, I forgot to show these, but I added some small hydrofoils rudders in the back here just to help a little bit with uh, well like keeping the ship ship straight even if we get a loss out of power if we get the loss of power we can still do that yeah uh, by the way this is what i imagine a little entrance way for the guests to the big feast um, that come with balloon or airship so we can kind of, or kind of hovercraft, so we can kind of dock it here, is the idea. Yeah, so I believe that's, uh, that's uh, so far as this iteration goes. So let's move on to the next. And before we move on, this is version 33, by the way. <laughs> 33! Oh, no, 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 I mean iteration 33. Like the version is uh, closing into 100. Uh, but the iteration where I've saved that it has been changed long enough to get a new like save because every time I build on this thing and I made something major that I think is worth worth taking up I do a new manual save um, and it's just a number higher than the number before so this time I saved it as 33 well well version 33 with a cost of 2.11 uh, million we will do a little, we're just gonna spawn in a megalodon to see this in a little bit of action. Because in next episode, we're going to go through and see which turrets will stay and which turrets will go. Did I show you this golden trim, by the way? Isn't that super cool? I think it is. So yeah, let's, let's load that in and we're going to look in future episodes on changing out and switching out turrets if we need to. We do actually need to change some of them, but no spoilers. Let the battle testing begin. So right, we're following the crams here. Ooh, and these are whole point crams, most of them. We're gonna see... Big miss, big miss. Let's see here, the laser is really frying stuff off here. Yeah, we have a pretty powerful laser. Damage B... Yeah, that should be it. Oh, there we have it. There we have it. So here is uh, my sniper cannons. They're shooting underwater. Alright, see there. 
And there, 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 ah, there we have one, two now. Well, they only shoot every 10 seconds, we'll see. We have successfully turned towards the enemy at least. Ooh, I'd suspect we will not be able to deal with these uh, incoming oh, missiles very well. We don't have any decent missile defenses as for now. And you can see it deals some pretty big holes in our armor here. That's probably torpedoes. Ooh, scary, scary. Look at that. Oh, we're actually outrunning them. That's beautiful. So we're, we're just gonna check. We have a speed of 36 meters per second. It's not uber fast, but it's not slow either. It's a pretty decent speed, I think, especially since we are maneuverable at this size. Somehow we got some damage here. Cram cannons has got some barrels shot off. They seem to be aiming towards the enemy. Yeah, they have them in scope. That laser seems to get prio over the other ones. I wonder if the other laser's connections got damaged or if the laser just ain't strong enough. It's probably not strong enough. There we have some Q1 shots too. We have engine power still, so before we had a little bit of a problems with the engine power running out, I know. Uh, so I added more engines, that kind of upped the budget for that. The pack is going on there too. And our crams are going through here, yeah. So, I think we should turn off this damage debugging. Clear all. There we go. Let's check what's happening here. The laser is doing a decent job, I think. We're leading through there, despite the smoke. I don't know how much smoke the Megalodon has, actually. But of course, the Megalodon is a bit cheaper, but um, it's, uh, it's good to know we can actually beat this thing. Like, the Megalodon is no match, but we are also a good bit more expensive. I think in the next episode, we are going to test against the Ragnarok, and from that information, we'll be able to know what we're gonna do with the turrets. Because I do believe that these hollow point turrets don't really do optimal damage, so yeah, there's that. But that's it for this time. Um, we are going to check back with you next week. And th at that time, I'm going to come with a basic set of rules too, I think, uh, so that you can start building a little bit if you'd like to. Otherwise, uh, and remember, there is like at least a month away, probably two, uh, before I'll accept any submissions. So you don't have to rush to anything. Thanks a lot for watching, nonetheless, I'll see you next time, and you know what to do, like the video, do subscribe if you haven't to, and of course, join the Discord, enlist yourself in the army of Jimodism, and I'll see you next time. This is your host, Jimodism, signing out.